بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بالماء علمتنا آمين يا رب Okay, we're continuing with our course Journeying through important Islamic manners and etiquettes and we're trying to beautify our souls and beautify our mannerisms with these topics that we're taking in the hope that they bring us closer to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allahumma rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqtatam lisan yafqahu qawli the topic we're having today is al-amana al-amana so what is this word al-amana ma'na al-amana lughatan wa stilahan ma'na al-amana ta lughatan linguistically this topic that we're taking today al-amana it's did al-khiyana amana is the opposite to betrayal of trusts okay so you could say the topic today amana is trustworthiness and honesty and it's the opposite to al khiyana which is the betrayal of trusts and having evil trickery and intentions ma'na al amana ta istilahan what's the meaning of this word amana trustworthy technically it's mentioned in fayd al qadid by al imam al manawi rahimahullah ta'ala he said al amana tu hiya kullu haqq lazima ka ada'uhu wa hifdhuhu amana is every trust or every right that it's imperative upon you that you have to fulfill that right and to protect that right and the others from amongst them they said kullu ma iftarada ala al ibad fa huwa amana everything which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made obligatory upon the servant upon the slave then it's an amana it's a trust ka salatin wa zakatin wa siyamin like fasting and praying and giving zakah wa ada'u dain and paying back the debts wa awkaduha al wada'i and the most stressed of these trusts is when somebody leaves something with you in trust when somebody leaves something with you for you to take care of and the most stressed of these trusts that that people leave with you to take care of are secrets so what we've taken so far we've taken so far the amana trustworthiness linguistically it means trustworthiness did al khiyana the opposite of treachery and the opposite of betraying trusts and technically it's everything which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to do okay that we need to take care of that in the best of ways possible and also anything which people they entrust us with we need to fulfill that back to them in the best of ways possible so trust is of two types is trust with regards to the worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon us and also it's trust with regards to what people trust us with in terms of depositing something with us or their secrets or telling us about themselves that which they don't want other people to know and such matters a targhibu fil amana the encouragement to have amana in the quran and the sunnah awwalan fil quran firstly in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah an-nisa inna allah ya'murukum an tu'addu al-amanati ila ahliha wa idha hakamtum bayna an-nasi an tahkumu bil-'adl Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he commands you that you have trusts that you fulfill the trusts and you return them to their people and that if you judge between people you judge with justice inna Allah na'ma ya'idukum bihi inna Allah kana sami'an basira verily it is the best that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admonishes you to and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sees the one who hears and the one who sees so this was in surah an-nisa so the admonishment in this verse is that we return the trusts to those that have trusted us with them and that we judge between people in the best of ways. So this verse it was revealed in specific to the leaders of the Muslims that they must be just and they must be fair and they must fulfill their trust and their duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their duties towards the rest of the creation. So this was in specific to the rulers. However, it's also in general to the rest of the muslim populace that as well as expecting that the rulers they apply the sharia of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they judge between people in the most just of manner that they fulfill their trusts that are upon their shoulders with regards to allah and with regards to the creation then it's also upon us too so many of us we complain about the situation of the rulers that why are they so oppressive why are they not fulfilling their trusts why don't they judge by the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but what about us look to ourselves what are we doing as as followers as people that live in society are we much better so the question is that we have to make changes wherever we can make changes so that the whole situation can improve allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
when it comes to describing the successful believers in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِآمَانَاتٍ وَأَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ Those that are well aware and observe fairly their trusts and their contracts. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah said that. أَيْ مُرَاعُونَ لَهَا حَافِذُونَ مُجْتَهِدُونَ عَلَىٰ أَدَائِهَا So these people, they take care with regards to their trusts, they're careful to fulfill their word and their contracts, and they strive as, as hard as they can to do that. وَهَذَا شَامِنُ لِجَمِيعِ الْعَمَانَاتِ الَّتِي بَيْنَ الْعَبْدُ وَبَيْنَ رَبِّهِ So this is comprehensive covering all of the trust that are between a slave and his lord. كَالتَّكَالِيفِ أَسِرِّيَّةِ Like for example, the secret acts of worship that a person does. When the person gets up to pray at night, for example, when the person has sincerity. All of these things, الَّتِي لَا يَطَّلِعُ عَلَيْهَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ All of these things that nobody comes to know about except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani nobody can tell if we're sincere or not. Nobody knows in reality if we're praying the night prayers or not. This is just between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this type of amana, we have to fulfill it to the best of our ability. And also the trusts which are between the servant and the rest of the creation, between a Muslim and the rest of creation, pertaining to wealth, pertaining to secrets, and other than that. So many of us, we sometimes forget how important it is to be trustworthy. We should all check ourselves, all reflect internally, are we a trustworthy person? So when we go to work, for example, and we're working, and the boss is not at work, the manager, he's away for a while, a day or two, or maybe a week, how do we react? How do we behave in that time frame? Are we still coming to work on time? Are we still doing the work to the best of our ability? Or are we trying to come to work late, leave a bit early, cut corners with regards to the type of work that we're supposed to be doing? So sadly, that is the case of many of the Muslims. That when you interact with them financially in transactions or you interact with them in a workplace, you find sadly that many Muslims, they cut corners. They don't fulfill their trusts in the way that they're supposed to be doing so. And the believer is supposed to be such that the believer doesn't need a manager or supervisor. Once the believer has signed the contract to fulfill X, Y and Z, they will f fulfill that X, Y and Z to the best of their abilities, whether the manager is there overlooking them or the supervisor is there supervising them or not. You, the believer is going to fulfill these contracts to the best of their abilities because they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask them about it on the Day of Judgment. And they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tasked them with fulfilling the trusts, whether it's trust between Allah or trust between the creation. So we need to be the best of people when it comes to being trustworthy. Amana is a noble quality, is something which is highly praised and beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it with regards to the prophets. When Musa alayhi salam, Musa may peace and blessings be upon him, when he ran away from Fir'aun because he killed a person by mistake, he killed a person whilst defending another person, and Musa, uh, Fir'aun and the authorities were after Musa alayhi salam, he ran away from his city. And he traveled for a long distance and a long period of time until he came to the place known as Madian. When he came to Madian, he took rest under a tree and he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَقَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْلٍ فَقِيرٍ Oh Allah, I am in desperate need of any good that you descend upon me. So he took a short break. As he was about to take that break and rest under the tree after his long journey, excuse me, he saw in the distance, the near distance, he saw a crowd of people around the well and everybody was trying to withdraw water for themselves and their animals, okay? And he saw that there were two women there that were waiting on the outskirts and they couldn't get close to the well because they were being pushed and shoved by the men. So Musa Islam, being the amazing specimen of a man that he was, he couldn't stand to see injustice in front of him. He jumped up, even though he was super tired, but he jumped up and he rushed towards them. He asked them their situation and then he poured the water for them. Once they told him, the ladies, that they, we cannot get to this water place, we have to wait till the men go, and that is our general situation. Musa Islam, he pushed the men out of the way, and he did it for them. He took the water for them. Later on, one of these women, the two daughters they were of Shu'aib Islam, the Prophet Shu'aib, they said to their father, they mentioned to their father about Musa Islam, and that we came across a person with amazing characteristics. So in Surah Al-Qasas they said قَالَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا يَا أَبَتِ اسْتَعْجِرْهُ One of them, they relate to their father, they said Oh father, take this person to be an employee for you. Hire this person. إِنَّ خَيْرَ مِنْ اسْتَعْجَرْتَ الْقَوِّيُ الْأَمِينَ 
because the best of the people that you can hire to employ for yourself is the one that is al qawi the one that has strength and al amin and the one that is trustworthy so musa alayhi salam he ended up getting a job with Shu'aib Islam. So after he made that dua that Allah, I'm in need of any good that you can descend upon me. After a while, he ended up getting a job with this Prophet Shu'aib Islam. And the point we're going to take from it is that Musa Islam, he was a person that was described as being st- strong and trustworthy. So these are combination and qualities that we need in the Ummah. We need the Muslims to be nurtured upon this. Why? Because a person may have all the skills in the world, they may have the strength and the ability, but if they're not trustworthy, then the job and the project is not going to be fulfilled, not going to be done to the best of the ability. And it also could be a a, a case that a person is trustworthy, but they don't have the strength or the ability. So again, the job and the project and the work that is required to be done in the Ummah is not going to be done to the best of the ability. So a person has to be trustworthy, has to have amana, has to be amin, and should be qawi, should be also, also strong. Strong with regards to their physical abilities, strong with regards to their mental abilities, strong with regards to the relationship between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and strong with regards to the amount of skills that they have so that they can help serve the ummah. Didn't the Prophet sallallahu say that al-Muslim um, al-Qawi ahab ila Allahi min al-Muslim al-Da'if wa fi kullin khair that the strong believer is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the weak believer. However, in both of them, there is good. So the more the person has strength in the ways that are described, then the better that person is as a believer. The absence of this topic, al-amana, is a serious issue. We cannot take it lightly. The people and us, we need to know the importance of this topic and reflect upon it. Once understanding it and implementing it, we need to spread its importance. In Bukhari and Muslim, it's narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu said, as reported by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, he said, Ayatul Munafiqeen Thalatha, or Ayatul Munafiq Thalatha. The signs and the characteristics, the main characteristics of an hypocrite are three. Ida hadatha kadhaba, when the person speaks, they lie. Wa'ida wa'ada akhlafa, and when the person makes a, a contract or a promise, they break that pro- contract or they break that promise. tumina khan, And when the person is given a trust, whether it be a secret or something is placed with that person to be looked, looked after, then that person betrays that trust and they don't fulfill it in the way that they should. So this hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, it's very important for us to reflect upon. Because how many times do we make a promise and we forget that once we've given our word to somebody, that becomes a promise. We say to somebody that we will do such and such for you, don't worry. Or we will meet you at such and such place at such and such time. These are all promises. Or we are told a secret by somebody because they feel that they can trust us. And then we go and spread it to people that this person didn't want the secret to be spread to. So all of this is a problem. And we need to reflect and ensure that we don't behave in such a manner. We need to become more trustworthy and spread that trustworthiness amongst ourselves and our families so that we can become beacons of trustworthiness in societies that we live in. In Bukhari and Muslim, there's another narration where the Prophet ﷺ was speaking to the companions about a particular topic. And then an Arab Bedouin came to the Prophet ﷺ in the midst of his conversation that he was having with the other companions. And he asked him a question. The question was, Mata um, Sa'a, when is the hour going to be established? Yani when is the day of judgment? So the Prophet ﷺ didn't pay attention to his question, he carried on speaking to the, co- to the companions that he was already speaking to. Once he finished his conversations with the companions, then he asked about where is this Bedouin that asked this question? And then the man said, I'm here, O Prophet of Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِذَا ضُيَّأَتِ الْأَمَانَةُ فَانْتَظِرِ السَّاعَةُ If amana trustworthiness is lost amongst people, then wait for the hour to be established, meaning that soon the hour is going to be established. The Bedouin he asked, كيف إضاعتها? How is the losing, how is, it, how is it the losing of trustworthiness? What does this actually mean? The Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا وُسِدَ الْأَمْرِ إِلَىٰ غَيِّ أَهْلِهِ فَانْتَظِرِ السَّاعَةِ If trustworthiness, if positions of authority are given to those who are unable to fulfill them whether they don't because they don't have the ability or because they're not trustworthiness they don't have trustworthiness in them then wait for the hour to be established 
So the hadith is showing us that there's a real problem in the times that we're living and in each time that comes closer and closer to the ends of time, which is that the amana is going to be lost. lost. Trustworthiness is going to be lost. And one of its real um, manifestations is that people will be end up taking positions of responsibility and they are not suitable for those positions of responsibility. So we can judge for ourselves, we can reflect how many foolish people are leading the nations of this planet. The actions and the decisions that these people take are only detrimental for the countries that they are ruling. Nor do they establish in, full, in, in, in a complete manner, in the best of manners, the legislations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nor do they bring to the creation, to the community at large, that which benefits them in their day-to-day -day living. All they do is cause corruption on the earth. And all of this is because they are not fit for being in these positions. And this ties back to the fact that the Prophet ﷺ is saying that we're coming closer and closer to the Day of Judgment and that the trust is getting lost bit by bit. However, an important point to mention here, which is that many a time when people complain about the rulers and complaining about the rulers is something which is natural, right? The rulers are there and they're supposed to be establishing the Sharia, the Sharia that we love. And if they don't establish the Sharia, then it hurts us. It hurts the believers because we want to live in a place, we want to see in the Muslim lands that the Sharia, the laws and legislation of Allah Azawajal are established because they bring about so much benefit, so much benefit. But however, when we complain to ourselves about this, we should also reflect that why is the situation of the rulers the way it is? Ali radiallahu anhu explains to us why that is. Ali, one of the Khulafa, one of the rightly guided caliphs and one of the greatest of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu it was said to him when he was the ruler in his time, when he was the caliph, why is it, O Ali, in your time that we have so much strife and there's so much splitting in the community and bloodshed? Why is this taking place in your time? So Ali radiallahu anhu said, in the time of Abu Bakr and Umar, they had people like me that they were ruling. And in my time, I have people like you that I am ruling. So the questioner was asking this question in a way of complaining that look, in the time of Abu Bakr and Umar, everything was good, everything was cool. But in your time, Ali, there's big problems. So Ali was explaining to him because they had people like me that they were ruling, yani good people, people that they could trust, people that tried their best to strive to implement the religion within themselves, within their families, within their communities. But in my time when I'm the ruler, I have people that don't really care too much about Islam. And that's why we have these tribulations and these problems. So when we read such a hadith, that the hadith that I just mentioned, and it talks about issues pertaining to the rulers, yes, we have the right to be upset and to complain. However, we should understand that the reality is until communities change their situation, and until they improve themselves at an individual level, at a communal level, then the ruler will not improve, right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a ruler upon us according to the state that we are in. If we're in a good state, we get a good ruler. If we're in a bad state, away from the pleasure of Allah, we also get a ruler that is similar to that. So this is kind of sidetracking, but it's related to the topic also. So we understand the importance of al-amana, how important it is to be trustworthy, how important it is to fulfill our trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned this previously in the topic, topic of ihsan, that we worship Allah to the best of our ability. And here also, it's a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is given to us, that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of our abilities. And also we fulfill the rights of other people. Any trust that we have pertaining to people, whether it's contractual, whether it's transactions, whether it's people wanting advice from us, whether it's people leaving things with us to take care of, whether it's people entrust their secrets to us, all of that we have to fulfill and ensure that we fulfill them in the best way possible. Fawaidul amana, what are the benefits, further benefits of al amana? So the scholars they say, Al amana tu min kamal al iman wa husn al islam. Aman, amana, this trustworthiness, is from the completion of one's faith and from the goodness of their Islam. The more one is complete in Iman and in Islam, the more you will find that that person, you can trust that person. You can seek advice from that person and they will give you the best advice possible. That person, you can leave things with them and they won't cause damage to the items that you have left with them. That person, you can tell them a secret and they won't go spreading that secret around to those that you didn't want it to be spread to. Thirdly and secondly, يَقُومُ عَلَيْهَا أَمْرُ wal ard that the amana, this trust, 
it's upon what the universe is built upon. The universe is built upon trust. Trust is built upon. Also, بِالْأَمَانَةِ يُحْفَذُ الدِّينِ وَالْأَعْرَادِ وَالْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَجْسَامِ Through trustworthiness, the religion is preserved. The honor of people is preserved. Their wealth is preserved. And they physically themselves are preserved. الأمين يحبه الله ويحب الناس الأمين يحبه الله ويحبه الناس The trustworthy person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves him and also the people love this type of character. من من أعظم الصفات الخلقية التي وصف الله بها إباده المؤمنين بقوله From the greatest of descriptions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to his successful servants is this description that they have of being trustworthy in Surah Al-Mu'minun وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَأَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ Those believers whom لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ who they with regards to the, the trust that are given to them and the contracts that they um, undertake رَاعُونَ they are very careful pertaining to these trusts and to these contracts so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Mu'minun and Surah Al-Ma'arij in this verse وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِ مُعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ is mentioning this description in a form of praise. That the believers that have this, they are praised. That whenever they are given a trust, whenever they have contracts, they take care of these trusts and these contracts to the best of their ability. مُجْتَمَعٌ مُجْتَمَعٌ تَفْشُوا فِيهِ الْأَمَانَةِ مُجْتَمَعٌ خَيْرٍ وَبَرَكَةٍ A community wherein amana is spread, Trustworthiness is spread, is a, is a community that will have lots of barakah, tranquility, and lots of goodness in it. The more one thinks about their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sense of how they're going to be taken to account on the Day of Judgment, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is observing everything that they do, the more they will have this understanding of, I need to fulfill my trusts. I need to be somebody that is trustworthy, because this trust that has been given to me, Allah is observing how I interact with this trust, trust and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question me on the Day of Judgment. The Prophet sallallahu was well known to be a person of trustworthy character. Before Islam even, before revelation even came to him, the Prophet sallallahu was known amongst the people as being Al-Amin, the trustworthy. So there was a time when the Quraysh, the large, um, the predominant and ruling clan, the ruling tribe in Mecca in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they were rebuilding the Kaaba. They were rebuilding the Kaaba and they got to the point where they were going to place the black stone in its place. Now each one of these tribes, they wanted the honor of doing that. So they started to argue amongst themselves and the argumentation went on for days to the point that they nearly got to blows, they nearly came to physical clashes between themselves as to who which one of the tribes from amongst the Quraysh will have the honor of placing the black stone. So what they did is they said that the next person, they agreed upon a point and they said the next person that enters into the masjid, into the, the realms of the masjid, the Kaaba, then we will give this person the judgment between us as to how to solve our situation. And lo and behold, it was the Prophet ﷺ that entered after a while. And they trusted the Prophet ﷺ and they gave him the decision of how to deal with this situation. So what the Prophet ﷺ did through his intelligence, he said, get the black stone, put it on a cloth, and each tribe, each clan will hold a corner of the cloth, and they will bring it up close to the position where the black stone is supposed to be. And then I, Muhammad Sallallahu will place in the black stone, and that's what he did Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, avoiding these clashes that were about to take place between the tribes, and it, uh, and it brought about a good solution to the situation that was there. Why? Because they trusted the Prophet ﷺ. Also, after the Prophet ﷺ became a prophet, he always fulfilled his trust even more so. So the Prophet ﷺ living in Mecca, he and his companions that became Muslims, they went through a lot of tribulation. They went through a lot of torture and difficult times, some really severe difficult times. And when the Prophet ﷺ and the believers were given permission by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to migrate to Mecca, to, to Medina, to make the hijrah to Medina, the Prophet ﷺ could have just easily left in the night, as he was planning to do, and go. But the Prophet ﷺ had a huge problem that he was trying to deal with, and he was trying to figure out a solution for this problem. Do you know what that problem was? 
The problem was that the Prophet ﷺ had been given so many trusts in his possession to look after by those who even disbelieved in him. So even those Quraysh who didn't like his message, however they found him to be the most trustworthy in the town, so they would leave their trusts with the Prophet ﷺ, they would leave items like wealth etc with the Prophet ﷺ to look after. And the Prophet ﷺ had this issue that he's about to escape from Mecca now to Medina and he has the right just to leave the people as they are because they oppressed him and they did wrong to him. But the Prophet ﷺ knew that what was more befitting and more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he fulfills the trust so that he can teach those around him, especially the Muslims, that no matter what situation you are in, even if you are oppressed, you don't return the oppression with oppression. Yes, you can defend yourself. Yes, you can conquer those who are trying to oppress you, but you don't return the oppression with oppression. So the Prophet ﷺ, he told Ali radiallahu anhu to be in his house and to stay there the night and then to later on to return all of the trusts that were with the Prophet ﷺ at the Prophet ﷺ's house to, to the people that they had, that they belonged to. So we need to think often, are we people that are trusted by others? Are we people that are truly fulfilling the trusts? Because it's something which the Prophet ﷺ would stress often and it's something that reflects upon the Islam as a religion. If the Muslims, whenever they have interaction with non-Muslims or even other Muslims, and they always leave a bad example after that interaction, an example of broken trusts, broken promises, broken contracts, and not wanting the best for people, then this tarnishes the reputation of Islam. And so we have to ensure that we are not like that when it comes to our interactions with other people. The Prophet ﷺ would often, whenever he would get the chance, he would emphasize amana, trustworthiness. Imam Ahmad and Ibn Haban, they narrate in their collections of hadith from Anas radiallahu anhu who said, قَلَّمَا خَطَبَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم إِلَّا قَالْ لَا إِمَانَ لِمَنْ لَا أَمَانَةَ لَهُ That it would be very rare that the Prophet ﷺ would speak to us, address us, except that he would say and remind us with that there is no faith for the one that doesn't have trustworthiness. وَلَا دِينَ لِمَنْ لَا أَهْدَى لَهُ And there is no religion for the one that is not trusted to fulfill his or her contracts. And so the Prophet ﷺ would actively teach the companions trustworthiness. Look how the Prophet ﷺ was in the marketplaces. The Prophet ﷺ would go actively and check what was being sold in the marketplaces. So for example, in this hadith collected by Imam Ahmad and Imam Muslim, we see that the Prophet ﷺ, he came across ala subrat al-ta'am. The Prophet ﷺ came across a pile of food that was being sold. فَأَدْخَلَ يَدَهُ فِيهَا So the Prophet ﷺ entered his, food, his hand into that food. فَنَالَتْ أَصَابِعُهُ بَلَلًا and then the Prophet ﷺ, when he withdrew his hand, he noticed that his fingertips, his fingers were wet. فَقَالْ مَا هَذَا يَا صَاحِبُ الطَّعَامِ He said, what is this, O person who owns this food? أَصَابَتْهُ السَّمَاءُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The person said in response, in defense of himself, O oh, Rasulullah, it's that the fact that the rain fell upon this food. So what did the Prophet ﷺ say? He said, أَفَلَا جَعَلْتَهُ فَوْقَ الطَّعَامِ كَيْ يَرَاهُ النَّاسِ The Prophet ﷺ said, why did you not then put this bad food on the top so that people could see and make their own choices rather than you cheating them. Man ghashya falaysa minni. Whoever cheats then that person is not from me. So the Prophet ﷺ was teaching the best of examples of how Muslims should interact with one another and with other people in terms of trustworthiness. When it comes to buying and selling, when it comes to interactions, your interactions should be pristine. You should be the most honest in terms of your interactions. Not one who wants to cheat people. And sadly, you find you know, the complete opposite of what the Prophet ﷺ trained the companions to be upon. Look, for example, Ibn Abbas, anhu, one of the closest companions, the cousin of the Prophet ﷺ, one time he sent a servant out of his, of his to the marketplace to buy a horse. So this servant, he went to the marketplace and he found a beautiful horse and he bartered with the person that owned the horse and he managed to bring down the price. So he came back to Ibn Abbas anhu with the horse and he told him the price that he got it for so happily and so overjoyed. Ibn Abbas anhu said, was the seller who gave you this horse at this cheap price, was he happy? And the man said, yeah, the servant said, yeah. But Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he didn't, it didn't sit well with him that he managed to get this product, which was this horse at such a cheap price. So he went back to the marketplace and he looked for the owner of this horse that had sold it to him and he said, do you know the value of this horse? And the person said, yes, I sold it to you at such and such price. Ibn Abbas said, no, but I want to pay you more because it's worth more. 
So he paid the man even more than the, than the, than the horse was initially worth because Ibn Abbas knew the real value of that product that he was buying. So he didn't feel right within himself that, look, I know that this horse or this product that I'm buying, it's at a particular value. And this person, maybe he doesn't know the real value in the marketplace and he sold it to me cheaper. So he went back and he forced the man who had sold him this product to take money back so that he could, you know, raise the price. And that's just an amazing way of interacting with people. His amana, his level of trust was so much that not only did he not do anything wrong, but he just felt this inner, uh, inner thing that pushed him to want to give more to the people. And this is how the believer is supposed to be with their interactions. Let alone fulfilling the trust, we're supposed to go above and beyond if we're able to do so. So rather than being those people that cheat people and, you know, break the contracts, especially financial contracts, financial transactions, we need to be very careful and try to portray the best interaction, the best um, image that we possibly can as Muslims for Islam. And the strange thing is, I want to touch upon this, the strange thing is that there's no need for us to cheat because our rizq has been guaranteed. Whatever you've been promised with regards to whatever financial benefits you're going to get in this world, it's already been written for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا مِن دَابَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا There is no creature upon the earth except عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا Except upon Allah is its provisions. This verse is interesting. Why? Because linguistically it should be there is no creature upon the earth except from Allah are its provisions or is its provisions. But Allah took away the word from, min, and instead he put ala. Why? Because ala it gives the meaning of guarantee. So as Allah said, illa ala Allahi rizquha instead of illa min Allahi rizquha. Instead of saying from Allah is its provisions, Allah said upon Allah is its provisions. So that's a form of guarantee because when you say to somebody don't worry about that it's upon me i'm going to take care of it it's like you're guaranteeing it and same with regards to the arabic language so allah is guaranteeing the provision for people so if it's we know that our provision is guaranteed for us why then do we cheat people when it comes to financial transactions why don't we try to give people the best of deals that we can give without them losing and without us losing that is where the barakah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends when people interact with each other in the most trustworthy manner, that is where the barakah descends. So we have to be people that train ourselves to have amana. So as a recap, how do we have amana? How do we develop this trustworthiness, this characteristics of being amin? First and foremost, we have to always reflect upon our aqidah, our belief, which is that we know we are going to be taken to account on the Day of Judgment. Every single thing that we earn, or that we did, or that we said, every single thing we're going to be questioned about on the Day of Judgment. So we know that we cannot escape questioning for it. So if it was done in the right way, we're going to be blessed. But if it was done in the wrong way, it's possible that we can be punished for that. So the more we think about this aqidah that on the Day of Judgment, I'm going to be questioned. And even before the Day of Judgment, Allah is watching me. Allah is all aware of what I do. I may be smart, I may be able to trick the people, but I can't trick Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the more you think about that, and the more you believe in the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah jaza'u al-ihsan illa al-ihsan. Is it not the case that the reward of the one who does good is except that they get more good? As we took last week in the topic of ihsan, the more we ponder upon these matters, the more we will want to be trustworthy. How do we develop it amongst our children? We teach them this aqidah and we never train them to lie. Many times as parents, we teach our children to lie from a young age. Maybe somebody's called you on the phone and your child has said, mum or dad is so-and-so on the phone. And you tell them, no, tell them that I'm not in the house. Tell them I've gone somewhere because you don't want to speak to that person. So what have you done in this instance? You've taught the child from a, year, a, a very young age to lie on your behalf. So how are they going to be people of trustworthiness if you're doing that to them? Okay, so we have to impart from a young age to our children how to be trustworthy and the benefits of being trustworthy and the virtue of being trustworthy from reading to them the seerah reading to them about the companions radiallahu anhum and how they would live their lives in with a high level of trustworthiness and how this is love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing these small steps and doing them regularly then inshallah we will be people of trustworthiness and not people of khiyana which is the opposite of trustworthiness 
and therefore be away from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and live a life that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pleasing to the rest of the creation that we interact with. If there's anything which was correct, it was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a gift. Any mistakes and shortcomings were for myself and shaitan. If anyone has any questions pertaining to this topic, then feel free. Wa jazakumullahu khairah.